Hey YouTube, uh, I'm going to be tying a soft tackle hair's ear for you. And I know you've seen probably a million soft tackle hair's ears, but uh, I really want to talk about technique and, and how to uh, put the soft tackle on. I'm going to be using a dubbing loop and I'm going to be doing it a little bit different than uh, you've probably seen in the past. I'm going to put the dubbing in the loop itself. And what it does, this is a size 16, uh, it's a Hannock 450. Uh, I tie a ton of 16s and 18s, and what I find when you're tying soft tackles, if you do it the traditional way, which I'll show you in a minute, um, it, it tends to create a lot of bulk right here, and you get all this dubbing and, 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 and CDC fiber, and it's actually hard to spin it and make it look really clean and streamlined. So I'm just going to show you how we do that. So let's, um, let's get a clean one in the vise here. Uh, this is a, a Hannock 450 size 16, the same one there. Uh, I love pink beads, by the way. I've been, I love them on waltz worms and soft tackles. I've been using them a lot. And some good success. So this is a, a 80 uni thread, Rusty Dunn. I like this. I like a, a um, UTC 70. This, any th thread that's thin and you can flatten. Okay. So... We're gonna start it behind the bead, and you can see I don't build this dam a lot. of People say you gotta build the dam to seat the bead, and you don't need to do it. I, I just think it creates a lot of unnecessary bulk, and by the time you finish the fly, it's gonna seat just fine, okay? We're gonna take about five fibers, and I like about five fibers on soft tackles. Now, one thing we wanna do is we wanna align the tips, and what I, what you can do is grab them and yank them off the, this is Coke de Leon, you can yank them off the stem if you'd like, but what I like to do is, if you just take a little bit extra time, you can line up the tips, grab them, and then just simply cut them away. And that way you know they're in perfect alignment, okay? So we're gonna spin the thread counterclockwise and watch, see how it jumps backwards? That way you're not fighting it. You're not, you're not fighting it when you're putting the thread on the hook. It's not going forward. So if you counterclockwise spin it, it's always going to jump backwards and right where you want it. Okay. We are going to rib the fly with small copper wire. So here's a little trick. So once again, go, we're going to put, we're going to, Take the thread all the way back to where we need it. Now spin it counterclockwise, and then one, two, three, four. You're back behind the bead, and you can see we didn't add any bulk. It's still extremely thin. Just stick the wire in the groove behind the bead, and go backwards. Now. You can see that I'm not going all the way back. You can see there's some room between the thread and the end where I need it to be. Um, once we dub the hook, it's actually, it's very difficult to slide the dubbing all the way to the top. So, you know, you get the dubbing right about there. And then what you do is you wrap the undubbed portion of the thread to the back of the hook. And by the time you get in the back, the dubbing is going to be right where you need it. So the hair's ear I'm using is, uh, it's trout line. It's uh, called Mad Rabbit Dubbing. It's natural. I'm always um, on a never-ending search for the perfect hair's ear, and I swear I I think I finally, finally found it. It's, uh, it's really thin. It just dubs up really nice. Now, I want you to, uh, it's not coarse. Like, uh, hairline is very coarse, uh, uh, Hair's ear, this is not, it's super, super thin. Now you see that amount of dubbing? It's not a lot, right? I think people really, really overdub. So we're just gonna put a really thin, I actually just pulled some more off. That's how much I'm putting on. You can see it's fingers width. Now, let's dub this on. And I can already tell I just put the correct amount on. That is about, it's about an inch of dubbing right there. About an inch. You can see it's a really thin noodle. Now we're gonna go 
to the back of the hook. And you see I wrapped the undubbed portion of the thread. It came to the back of the hook and now I'm ready. It's, it's just in perfect alignment. So now we're gonna go up the shank. You see that an inch of dubbing almost brought it up. And that's actually where we wanna be. You want this little gap. You see the bead is still loose. You need that little gap because we need to form our dubbing loop and we need that space right there. So let's counter rib it with the wire. And don't be afraid to dig into the uh, hairs here. One, two, three, four. Helicopter that off. Now for the dubbing noodle, we just, we're gonna take a, form a loop, right? It's about probably three inches long. Take the main bobbin of thread, wrap it around twice. Okay. Now this right here is a Stonfo dubbing tool. I really like this. So you can see when you pull it, it tightens it. When you let go, it opens it up, okay? So we're gonna be using, for the next step, Hens Spectra Dubbing. This is a Peacock Black. I really like this too. Now, look at the dubbing that I pulled out. I can count the fibers. That's right there. You see that? You can count the individual fibers. That's about four, five fibers. I think people, a big pet peeve of mine, what I see is people overdub. They just think that they gotta put all this gobs of dubbing in, and you can see what five fibers of ice dub right there. Look at that noodle. That's all you need to get around that fly. It's about, right about a half an inch long. So literally four or five fibers makes the perfect amount of dubbing. Now, we're gonna take this feather and uh, I'm gonna strip one side off here. And I just wanna show you something here. So on a size 16 hook, if we did the traditional way, which is you could put the strip one side, put the quill in and wrap it around, it, it's just not gonna work for this fly. First of all, you see how thick that quill is. You have to find the perfect feather to wrap around the shank of the hook. And then what ultimately happens is you get all this buildup from the quill plus the, the fibers. Look, you see how long these fibers are? Then you have to really pluck and pluck and pluck. And this is just a, it's just an easier, cleaner way. And it just looks a lot nicer doing it the way I'm gonna do it. So we are gonna take about, It's gonna be about that many fibers right there. About that many. And you can see when you put it up to the dubbing noodle, it's smaller than the dubbing noodle. So you're talking that's about slightly more than a quarter of an inch of fibers. We're gonna put it in our Petijon clip here. Now we're gonna put the fibers in with the dubbing. Pull down, and I wanna just cut these a little bit. Makes it a little bit easier. Just get them as close to the thread as possible. We're gonna spin it up. Now this is where you really gotta take your time. And uh, it's easy to kind of rush here because you are at the end, but I've seen a lot of really nicely tied flies get messed up at the end when you try to put the soft hack on. Just make sure you keep pulling the CDC backwards. Okay, you don't want it to get clumped forward. And with each wrap, wrap in front of the last one. Okay, so we're working from back of the gap to the front of the hook. Just keep preening it back. Just take your time. I 
I'm sorry that the camera's there, so it makes it a little bit harder. Almost done. Now, you might be able to see on the camera, I don't know if you can tell, but um, this uh, rusty done thread, it's, it's, on the, it's gray. So once again, because I'm massively anal and I want everything to blend in, I take a black Sharpie, brushable Loctite, which you should definitely be using on your flies or, or uh, super glue. You know, you don't need to use a lot of it, just brush it on, and then we are gonna, you can see that that is now blending in. The super glue, you know, you're digging that thread into the super glue and you just seeded it in. Okay. Now you can see that is a really, really nice looking fly. And I know this, let me cut the piece off right there. So now instead of, you know, grabbing a bunch of fibers and, and pinching them off, you can actually look at the long fly. I don't even think it looks that bad, but I'm just gonna cut a little of these longer ones off. And that's it. And what you've got is this really beautiful buggy looking soft tackle. You can almost count each individual fiber from the CDC. It's just perfectly proportioned. And um, this just gives so much movement in the water. Actually, you know, air bubbles actually attach to, uh, to the legs here. And um, it, just, it just makes for a great bug. Streamlined, thin, and uh, once again, this is a size 16 and it just works wonderfully on all sizes, but but the smaller sizes in particular. So hope this helped. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave some comments. Happy to help you out. And uh, um, tight lines, everyone. See you later.